ABC 10 News at 7 starts now. In this short amount of time, there is no way that we could get everybody out of that country. A San Diego man watching helplessly from thousands of miles away after learning his family was not able to leave Afghanistan. And after today's deadly attack, he's terrified. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Lindsay Pena in for Steve Atkinson. ABC 10 News reporter Sofia Hernandez spoke to the man whose family has been trying to get to the airport. We need to, we need to help them. They're, they're living. They're not living over there. They're, they're on survival mode. Faisal is from Afghanistan. Working with the U.S. military, he now calls San Diego home. But his relatives are currently in Kabul. Having made five attempts to come to the U.S. unsuccessfully, he worries for their safety after explosions at the airport. It looks like I'm standing on an island surrounded by my parents, my brothers and sisters. And the only difference is that I'm safe here and I see all of them drowning. Last night was the only night Faisal's family was not there. <laughs> but this video sent by his friends visiting family in Afghanistan blurred because of the graphic devastation and anguish moments after the explosions. They were extremely scared. They feel hopeless and helpless, especially with the deadline that we received on the 31st all of the troops will be out. Faisal's sharing an extension on evacuations may help ease minds of those overseas. But given the tense circumstances, and what he's hearing is happening. On those checkpoints, Taliban's beat them, they shoot at them. If, if anybody tries to record, they shoot at them. It is a suicide mission trying to go to the airport now. He has asked his family to stay put, asking for any aid in moving troops and Afghan allies quickly. They somehow, they served us. They were trying to help that country and that didn't help. Now all of their lives are at risk. Sofia Hernandez, ABC 10 News. Faisal says his friends who took that video thankfully escaped the airport, but they are still trying to make it back to the U.S. Meantime, we did learn today that one El Cajon family trapped in Kabul is back in San Diego and two more have been evacuated. ABC 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala is joining us now live. And Mimi, the local school district says Congressman Daryl Issa played a crucial role in helping to get them out. Hi, Kimberly. Yeah, Cajon Valley Union School District officials tell us that they immediately reached out to Congressman Issa's team for help, and then his team immediately started working to try to bring those kids and their families back home to San Diego. I spoke with Issa today, and he tells me they are making progress, and he hopes all local families would be back in San Diego by August 31st. There's an awful lot who call San Diego home, so we, we're working a number of other cases. Congressman Daryl Issa says as the tireless work continues, his team is making progress, connecting with several families to bring back to San Diego County as they're trapped in Afghanistan. That we started off with north of 60. We're getting new leads uh, right now. According to Cajon Valley Union School District officials, eight of its families were visiting relatives in Afghanistan over the summer break when the Taliban took over. The district's community liaisons have been communicating with the students and reached out to Congressman Issa's office for help in bringing them back. Almost immediately the response was, what can we do? And they dug in and they really, really have helped. We've been able to drop everything else and just work on this. According to the district, one of the families with four Cajon Valley students is now back in San Diego. As of Thursday, two more families have safely made it out of Afghanistan, and the work continues to bring back an additional five families. They estimate 14 Cajon Valley students and their parents are still in Afghanistan. It looks like we might just get all of the Cajon families out and perhaps even back to the states before the 31st. ISIS says he's brought our local issue to the highest levels of U.S. government, including the White House, and he even spoke with the National Security Advisor Thursday morning. He says they've made getting these families out rapidly a top priority. To the credit of the administration, they seem to be very open and even encouraging the work that we're doing. And Congressman Issa really wanted to get this out there. If you know someone local who is stuck in Afghanistan but from San Diego, he urges you to contact your local representative or even his office immediately. We're live in El Cajon. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. And we spoke to County Supervisor Jim Desmond today about what's unfolding in Afghanistan. He talked about how today's attacks that left U.S. service members dead are especially difficult for San Diegans. For a military 
region that we are, the it's it's heartbreaking for veterans uh, to see, or even active duty members to see uh, the devastation and, and uh, us potentially not being able to get our, all of our uh, service members and the Afghanis who helped us out in the last 20 years to get them out. Desmond, who served in the Navy, doesn't believe we should leave Afghanistan on a certain date. He wants all Americans and Afghan allies who helped us to be evacuated first. I've never served in a war zone uh, personally myself while I was in the military. Uh, however, you know, one thing that's ingrained in the military is you always bring your people home. You always get them out. You, you, you go back for every last, every last person. We're also hearing from U.S. lawmakers representing San Diego about today's attacks. Congressman Mike Levin said, quote, I pray for the safety of all American service members and Afghans still in harm's way. And Congressman Scott Peters said, the commitment, bravery, and sacrifice of our service members to evacuate thousands of Americans and allies in record time will not be forgotten. A local Marine veteran is sharing his relief after helping the Afghan translator that he worked with get to the airport in Kabul. ABC 10 News reporter Michael Chen reveals how the translator got past the Taliban checkpoints. As the Taliban takeover unfolded. All I could think about was Orlando. Marine veteran Dustin Ivers launched a mission to help Orlando, the translator he worked with during a 2010 deployment in Helmand province. Frantic desperation. I, I thought my friend and his family were going to get killed. Ivers launched a letter writing campaign to members of Congress. I did get contact right back from uh, Scott Peters office and they worked with me and made sure that his papers were transferred to the State Department to get him on a flight list. Meanwhile, Ivers had tapped into an underground network of veterans, contractors, and active duty personnel with real-time data on the ground, including the location of Taliban checkpoints. Ivers sent Orlando instructions through an encrypted messaging app to meet military personnel at a certain time and place. The journey would be harrowing. The directions that we told him was to not actually take hard copies of the papers, wipe your phone, once you get to the airport, I'll send you everything back. Orlando and his wife, six months pregnant, managed to avoid all the checkpoints but one which they got through. Last Friday, Orlando called Ivers to say they were safe. To get that call that he had made it and he was with the Marines, it's everything. Orlando spent the next two days helping translate for U.S. troops before his paperwork went through. It shows his dedication to the mission. On Tuesday, Orlando and his wife boarded a military flight bound for Germany. Ivers says Orlando is hoping to resettle in San Diego. There's a few of us from the squad that are here. Huge support system for him if he made it to San Diego. And I'll teach him how to surf. Michael Chen, ABC 10 News. One story of hope and loyalty. And you can stay on top of any new developments on the situation in Afghanistan by downloading the 10 News app. A free version is available in the App Store. We have some breaking news now. The Supreme Court is blocking the Biden administration from enforcing the temporary ban on evictions. The federal moratorium had been extended until October 3rd, but the high court ruled late today that it should be up to Congress, not the CDC, to impose the moratorium. Congress has not done that. So property owners can now start eviction proceedings on millions of Americans behind on their rent because of the pandemic. And meantime, a big jump in local COVID deaths. The county reported 10 new fatalities today, bringing our total close to 3,900. There were also 1,100 new cases, while our seven-day test positivity rate dipped back below 8%. The San Diego Unified School District is now requiring students wear masks outdoors. They were already mandatory indoors, but the district now says they must be worn outside as well on campus unless the child is eating. Masks may be removed outdoors in certain situations and with certain distancing recommendations during PE, athletics and performing arts programs. The high demand for COVID testing is leading to long lines and in some cases longer than normal wait times for results. Well, the county is averaging about 17,000 tests a day over the past week. Two months ago, that number was 7,000, and at some locations, same day or next day appointments are full. The head of the local COVID vaccine program for Kaiser Permanente says keeping up with demand has been tough. A lot of our staff are really stretched pretty thin, and this is throughout all of Can um, San Diego, if not uh, county, if not California. 
The county currently has five large capacity walk-up testing sites. You can also check with your provider or local pharmacies. Employees at a downtown detention center are pleading for their jobs. Roughly 300 union employees with the Western Region Detention Facility say they will be out of a job when it closes September 30th. They say a White House executive order from January bans the DOJ from renewing contracts with privately owned prisons. A married couple who work at the facility says the loss of employment would be disastrous. When my husband and I are not working, we're raising our nine children, five boys and four girls. If on September 30th we both lose our jobs, it would completely ruin our family. The employees argue the facility is not a prison, but rather a temporary holding center for federal fugitives awaiting sentencing or trial.